Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Brendan Hauser with Evoke Bike. Are ketones complete nonsense? I sure as hell thought they were, and I'm definitely looking more into these. So what I want to talk about in this video, I had posted on Instagram. People hit me up with your questions about ketones. I'm trying to learn more about this new fuel source. I have the top five questions. So the first part of this video, I'm going to talk about why I started taking these. I thought these were total BS, and this came up in the Discord, and I'm going to walk through that. Then we're going to walk through the five questions. I'm going to talk about anecdotally. I was sent from Delta G nine bottles to try. And then we're going to talk where I see this being applicable to all of us because this stuff is super expensive. There was a question in the Discord and they were talking about a competitor. So I reached out to that brand and said, hey, I'd love to try this. Is there any way I can get a discount? I'm going to purchase a few bottles and try it on a big crazy day because I was expecting to feel nitrous coming out of my legs and just ripping up climbs. It didn't do anything. So I followed their instructions. The one caveat was I did not have a ketone meter, which I really wish I did. And I might go back and buy more of this just to test because for endurance sports right now, what we know is we want to be between one and a half to three millimoles of the ketone bodies in our blood. And I did not have a meter to test that. I just didn't feel a damn thing. I thought I felt it in the morning. I was like, something feels odd. And I'm not going to go fully into this on this video, but that's actually because it's not ketones. And there are studies that they had tried to use this formula in a study. And when they started giving people too much of it, they were getting drunk. So I don't know if I felt a little buzz or what, but that one we're going to talk about in a different video because there are some brands. There's a lot of like crazy information going on out there. And the more I look into this, some companies are having their products made by other brands and other brands are copying other companies. And now I there are people posting things that aren't all true out there. That's beyond the scope of this video, but we're definitely going to get into that. The company was also a little awkward when I started asking them questions about some of the stuff they posted on their website. I didn't really get a good vibe of honesty. So I kind of threw this out the window and I woke up in the morning after that long ride to five different messages, maybe six, of people saying, hey, but you have, have you tried these Delta G ketones? So I immediately looked into that them and was thinking these are way more expensive. What is the deal? noticeably more expensive than this other brand that I had first taken. So I reached out to them and I said, Hey, I've tried ketones or what I think are ketones. I'm an endurance athlete. I would love to test some of this. Would you be willing to send me nine bottles? And I'm going to do a review of them like this video and let's see what happens. And they were like, yeah, who are you? Let's talk. And I got on a phone call with them. So total disclaimer, they sent me nine bottles for free. I'm not getting paid to make this video. I am arranging to get a discounted price so I can buy more from them after I tell you about these results. And then I also said to them, hey, I have a small YouTube channel and following. I want other athletes to be able to get a discount. And they said, well, we do a 10% discount on our website. I said, great, let's make it 15. So they actually, so you can see that I'm, you know, helping you guys out. And I'm doing that because I want to try and get more free ketones for myself. Okay. This stuff is insane. So let's get into the top five questions. Number one, this was asked a lot. So do you still need to consume carbs when riding or are you just taking ketones? Ketones are another fuel source. This is, there are, one of the other questions was, is this really a food group? When we are ingesting carbohydrates, about 30% gets used by the brain. We can't directly say that taking on ketones will give us 30% more glycogen for exercising on a bike. But you can say that there's a, a very healthy percentage, let's call it 20% of more energy available for us to pedal if we are consuming ketones that can cross the blood brain barrier. So our brain isn't using as much glycogen. If you ask Delta G, do you, you do not need to consume carbs, but for performance and recovery, obviously that we know Taking carbs with your ketones will allow you to use both fuel sources more effectively for performance. So yes, you still want to eat carbs. Yes, I'm still eating 100 grams per hour on an endurance ride. I'm eating more if I'm doing intervals. 
Number two, that about two or three people asked, what happens to the body? Do we get used to using, like, how do we adapt to ketones? How does our body know what to do with them? And do we become resistant to them? Actually, the opposite happens. It looks like from research that's been going on, the body gets slowly better at using the ketones over time. It doesn't affect our body's ability to produce our own ketones because you do have ketones in your body and ketones are have, have been studied a lot previously when we are in starvation mode. So there's also just a bit of speculation. This is, I don't even think there's a study on this, but when I asked Brian from Delta G to go in a little bit more on this, and he said, it appears that the body and the brain, when we consistently take on ketones, we become more efficient using ketones for energy over long periods of time. So this doesn't mean that you won't be able to use ketones effectively on day one when you first take them, but it does appear that we will become more efficient with consistent use. And this is crazy to hear because this is sort of how I've been feeling. The first bottle of ketones I took, not for sport, for brain cognition, I went to work and it was like, let's freaking go. You're just super focused, not hyper, just in on the task. Sounds weird but they sell a bottle for you just take five grams of ketones. I will be shocked if you don't notice a difference in your clarity and cognition and focus. What does the BHB, that's the molecule that we're trying to increase in our blood. What actually happens when we have this 1.5 to three millimoles, you know, does it give us an extra 20% glucose availability why is this what they call the Goldilocks zone? And the answer from Brian was all of the positive research points to this direction where there's a lower threshold of 1.5 millimoles per liter, where your body will start to shift substrate utilization, meaning it will utilize the ketones for energy. There's no need to go above three as those are mostly quote unquote wasted ketones. And if you get way too high, about four millimoles, you can actually inhibit glycolysis. So there's a, it's like everything, more is not always better. And there is a balancing act in our body. We want the body to use the ketones, but we're not trying to not use glucose. We're just trying to have it spare the glucose. This, there's a study that I'll talk about in a minute that shows this. And there's a really interesting blurb that I think gives us the high level picture. This stuff is going to be everywhere. When the cost comes down, Right now, 32 grams costs about $35 unless you use this discount code. It's not cheap because you're gonna take that before you do a long ride, you're gonna take it during a ride for gravel events, for long road races, for long training rides. This is gonna be amazing. Question number four, what's an ester? Everyone said, you keep saying a ketone ester. An ester is just an oxygen bond. So Delta G is a ketone ester because they bind beta hydroxybutrate to R13-butanidiol, I probably butchered that, with an oxygen or ester bond. Question number five, can we actually call this a food group? Okay, this does sound crazy to me. I was like, a food group? We already know what the groups of foods are, what like we know our macronutrients. Delta G is full on board. You can call this a food group. It's actually recognized quite often in the, science, in the scientific community as the fourth macronutrient. There's a book called The Fourth Fuel that talks about the history of ketones. I have not read that yet. Ketones, specifically BHB, are a completely separate molecule from glucose and fat, and it's broken down and used as energy by the body. So now that we can really eat and drink ketones, it makes sense to call it a food. My last bonus question that I was more curious about was, let's say you have two bottles of the raw ester, 32 grams each, and you have a six hour ride or race. What would be the best time to consume these? Should we take one at the start and then at hour three, or do we wait until like hour two and hour four? Does it differ person to person? Delta G's gold standard would be to take half a bottle, so 16 grams, 20 minutes before you start, and then another half every half hour with your carbs. However, we only have two bottles. So I would do half before you start, half an hour in, and then take the other half and half at like hour three and five. Or if you 
I think earlier is better. That's my anecdotal answer from the 15 bottles that I've gone through. When I start with it, I feel great right from the get-go. When I take it just later, I've done also don't start with it, take it at hour three and hour five. I start to feel that little bit of fatigue about two and a half hours into a ride. I don't know about people here that are watching the channel. If I do a five and a half hour ride, excuse me, a five hour ride, I always think to myself, get to halfway and then you're halfway there. It, it's something about it is getting over that hump of the first two and a half hours and I start to feel a little fatigue and then I kind of like get in a groove and with the ketones, once you take them, the brain fog of hour three and a half is instantly gone. There's a little bit more kick in your step. When I've taken it, and I've gone through four bottles in a ride. I've taken a whole bottle before. I've taken a whole bottle at hour two, a whole bottle at hour four, and then a whole bottle when I got home. And I felt incredible. I felt like at hour five, I could ride another three hours. And I might try that when I have the time. But right now, it's just a super busy point of the year. And with the weather changing here in North Carolina in the mountains, it's pretty darn cold in the morning. And I might save this for a Florida ride or something. In this study talking about the glycogen sparing effects of ketones, this quick blurb, I think, just totally dials in a really important point. Substrate metabolism in the normal human body is flexible. We know this. Our bodies evolved to use different fuel sources depending on the availability. During exercise, energy expenditure increases dramatically above resting levels with rapid turnover of mobilized fats required to keep pace with ATP demand. As exercise intensity increases, mitochondrial oxidation of fatty acids reaches a ceiling. And that's when we shift the burden of the energy provision to carbohydrates so that the glycolytic supply of pyruvate is the major source for oxidation during heavy exercise. We all know this. The harder we go, the more carbs we're using. This is where ketones come into play. The elevated circulating ketone concentration significantly decreased human skeletal muscle glycolytic intermediates, including pyruvate. Remarkably, the suppression of glycolysis occurred despite physical workloads that would normally be highly glycolytic. So less glycolysis was happening because the ketones were present. We're saving more glycogen for later. Long rides, gravel rides, long road races, and recovery, you just feel really damn good on these things. They are super expensive, 35 bucks a bottle minus the discount, still not very cheap. Hopefully price comes down in the coming years. We are so new to this. Just the science is just coming around to being able to study these even more and use these even more. Tons of pro tour teams are using these. They don't talk about it a ton yet. A lot are nervous that these are gonna be banned by the UCI. And really, you can't, I, there's no way to ban this or they'd have to ban taking carbs. Hit me up with questions. Let me know how this has been going for you. If you've tried them, let me know if you try them. The discount code's below and good luck with your training. So my next tests are, I just have been doing a huge four week block right now. When I take a rest week, I'm going to come back and do some power testing. Try these out on like 15 to 20 minute efforts, see if there's any difference. Or is this just going to be beneficial for long rides, which I still love? And honestly, I will be taking these in the morning with my coffee as long as I can afford it. Good luck with your training. We'll talk to you soon. See ya.